the hero made this really yummy vegan like bolognese sauce and he just like put vegetables in it. it was like all vegetables okay like zucchini and tomatoes and onions and he pureed it and it was so good and like put some vegan sausage in it so I went home and my parents are super unhealthy and I was like guys I had this amazing healthy sauce and I want to make it for you because I want you guys to be healthy like I'm so excited for you and my dad's a super picky eater but I was really confident and so I was very confident in my ability to recreate the sauce because it was just vegetables and pepper so it turns out one you should cook some of the vegetables before blending them I just like put zucchini in a blender so if you've never had raw zucchini it tastes like like it's <laughs> honestly terrible so I did that I added some tomatoes some onion and then I added oh garlic because I do that to everything so much pepper and cayenne wait and wait wait pause <laughs> a little tangent to this story Yay! this girl loves garlic so much and it hurts her stomach so we'll go out to dinner and she'll have a whole cup of garlic. I have this really bad habit where I drink garlic sauce. <laughs> oh, here, proof. Okay, this container, mind you, there's a whole nother little container inside this container. This whole thing was filled with garlic sauce and she ate all of it. And then I'll get a text at like midnight. Like, my stomach is dying. Rip it out! <laughs> Get it out of me! We should be, you're gonna add a screenshot in of that. Okay, here's the thing. I'm about to get a text message in about... I would say about four hours. I'm gonna give it four hours, and in four hours, the text message is just gonna say, my insides are dead. <laughs> Period. So anyway, I added a bunch of garlic and cayenne, and I made my family sit down. I was like, this is gonna be the best vegan meal you've ever had in your life. Like, I was so excited. I didn't taste test it. I was so confident in my ability to make vegetables taste good that I was like, it. And my dad put it in his mouth and literally, literally, for half a second and spit it out. <laughs> and he looked at me and he was like, this is the most disgusting thing I've ever had. You failed me and I want something else for dinner. Get this shit out of my face. And my mom's really nice and she's like, honey, like, it's not that bad. And she like tried to eat it for me and then she was like, we can finish it together and I threw it out. Kind of gross cause it's in my denim jacket that I don't <laughs> Nice song. Um, okay, so some tips and tricks to taking Instagram photos. So tip number one, don't take shitty photos. <laughs> Use the background to highlight the focus of the subject. And it doesn't matter if you're using an iPhone or something like this, like an SLR. What I see the most of from people is the subject gets blended in or the background is too busy or something like that. A few ways that you can do this as far as making the subject pop is picking a background that's a little bit simpler. That way the subject really stands out. Now, if you have a busy background, you could use something called leading lines to really draw the attention to the subject. And then also bringing the subject a little bit closer to the camera. That way the subject is like actually in your face. Yes. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Tip uh, number two. Second tip. I guess going along with making the subject pop, I would say you can mess with the colors in something like Lightroom, which a lot of photographers use, or if you want to use a free program, something like Snapseed, Visco. Um, well, Visco. It's not that great. Use Lightroom, guys. Yeah, use Lightroom. Yeah, use Lightroom. It's totally worth it, especially if you're posting on Instagram. Can you give tip three? Because that's what I'm really excited about. Okay, so tip three, I don't know. I'll think about it. Let's keep going with this vlog. Okay. Bye!
Alright, so we just went to the last bookstore. How was it? It was cool. There's a bazillion people there though. So many people. We've never gone downtown. No, and this is my first time at the last bookstore and I've lived here for five years. <laughs> Alright, so third tip is not really talked about all that often, but it's the angle at which you're shooting your subject at. So if if you are holding your camera high to low, like you're shooting down towards the person, that's gonna give a lot more of a um, softer or feminine look. Whereas if you're shooting from below up, it gives a lot more presence. Like the subject commands a whole lot of presence. So where that's useful is if you're doing selfies, you're trying to look cute, you can hold the camera up high like okay. this. Hi. Or, did you see all the side chins? <laughs> or if you want to command a lot of presence, you shoot from below. And it really just depends on what kind of vibe, what kind of mood you're trying to give your photo. So, um, oh, I missed my turn. Damn it. A lot of yoga photography, I always shoot from below. So that the subject looks more epic. Whereas if I'm doing something like portraits, I shoot from above. Hope that helps. Three tips with, you know, action hero. Hey hero, ask me what my main food groups are. What's your main food groups? Eggs, chicken soup, and the taco stand by my place. You know, so I actually did that with an ex of mine. She was going to school, in, med school in like Pomona. And the only place that was good was this taco shop, and I swear to God, we gained like 20 pounds in like a month. Worth it? Maybe. Delicious? 100%. Oh, I'm down for tacos. Can you not curse? There may be children oh, listening. Sorry, sorry, I forgot. I'm sorry. Oh, fudge. I want some tacos. It's, it's just, it's gotta stop. Like this. This is, we gotta, we gotta stop. We gotta stop. Talk what? It's not okay anymore. It was cute for two months, three months, six months maybe. <laughs> now we're at a year. It's not cute anymore.